Picture this. You're standing on the shore of an ancient sea, and in front of you is not a calm blue postcard, but a restless Jurassic ocean full of things that clearly are not looking for a hug. Primitive sharks circle in the gloom, strange fish flash like broken mirrors, and huge shadows slide just beneath the surface. Among those shadows is one hunter that makes everything else look like background extras, Lie Pluridon. For years, documentaries, games, and internet legends have turned that name into myth. Even when you strip away the exaggeration, what's left is still frighteningly qualified to be called the true apex predator. To understand why, we have to drop into its world. Liopleurodon lived in the middle and late Jurassic, around 160 million years ago, when much of what is now Europe lay under warm, shallow seas. There were no polar ice caps, no long winters, just vast shelves of temperate water dotted with sandbars and islands. Whales and dolphins didn't exist yet. Instead, the oceans were ruled by two kinds of marine reptiles, long-necked plesiosaurs and the big-headed, short-necked pliosaurs. Liopleurodon was firmly in the second camp, built less like a swan and more like a living torpedo with teeth. So how big was it really? One famous TV series once showed Liopleurodon as a 25-meter super monster that could snack on anything in sight, including your submarine and half your childhood. Later, with better skulls and more complete skeletons, Paleontologists quietly rolled those numbers back. Most estimates today put a typical Liopleurodon at around 6 to 7 meters long, with the largest individuals maybe reaching 10 meters and several tons in weight. Think killer whale-sized, not swimming office block. Still, if you fell overboard next to one, the exact number of meters wouldn't matter. You'd be far too busy regretting every decision that led you into that water. The body plan was almost comically focused on hunting. Liopleurodon had four big paddle-like flippers, two at the front and two at the back, working together like a set of synchronized oars. Studies on similar animals suggest this four-flipper system allowed rapid bursts of speed and tight turns. It probably wasn't the champion of long-distance cruising, but for short, violent sprints, it was near perfect. You can imagine it hanging nearly still in the water column, just a darker patch in the murk, then driving forward with a few explosive strokes when something unfortunate drifted too close. In seas where visibility was often poor, that ability to switch from motionless to missile in a heartbeat was deadly. Then there was the head, which took the whole design from efficient to outright unfair. Liopleurodon's skull could reach over a meter and a half in length, making up roughly a fifth of the body. The jaws were lined with long, conical teeth rooted deep in bone, more like a rack of heavy chisels than delicate fish hooks. They were built to punch through flesh, clamp down and hold on, while the rest of the animal did the tearing. Even conservative reconstructions put its bite force in the same brutal league as the largest modern crocodiles. That's the kind of power that can snap ribs, shear flippers, and turn a healthy marine reptile into drifting scraps in a handful of savage shakes. The teeth themselves were a perfect no-maintenance weapon, like sharks. Liopleurodon constantly replaced them. If a tooth snapped on a bone or scraped against rock, another from the row behind slid forward to take its place. Break your tools, grow new tools, keep eating. The skull wasn't just about muscle, either. The arrangement of nostrils and internal passages suggests it could detect faint chemical traces in the water, following subtle scent trails toward injured or stressed prey long before anything came into view. For an ambush hunter, being able to smell trouble before you see it is effectively like cheating. Vision probably played a major role as well. With eyes set on the sides of its head, Liopleurodon had a wide field of view ideal for spotting sudden movement. Modern marine predators combine smell, hearing, pressure, sensing, and vision to build a three-dimensional mental map of everything happening around them. Liopleurodon didn't have the exact same toolkit, but the principle would have been similar. Picture it cruising slowly through a Jurassic Sea, constantly sampling the water, watching for the tiniest flicker or pressure wave. And then, when the angle lined up and the distance felt right, committing to a charge its victim never had time to process. 
So, what was on the menu for a hunter like this? Evidence from related pliosaurs points to a very mixed diet. Large fish, squid-like cephalopods, and other marine reptiles, including long-necked plesiosaurs and dolphin-shaped ichthyosaurs. Some prey animals were almost in the same size class as the predator itself. Liopleurodon wasn't a picky eater nibbling at small fry on the edges of the food web. It sat right on top, treating almost anything smaller and slower as potential food. A routine day probably meant patrolling a favorite hunting ground, waiting for something to make a mistake, then exploding out of the gloom, taking a massive bite, and sinking back into the dark to digest in peace. When people call Liopleurodon a true apex predator, they're talking about this overall balance. It wasn't the absolute longest marine reptile in history, and it's been overshadowed in pop culture by later giants like Mosasaurus or Megalodon. But in the warm, shallow seas covering Jurassic Europe, it ticked every important box, big enough to take down almost anything around it, fast enough over short distances to give prey almost no warning, sensitive enough to detect opportunities early, and tough enough that adults would have had few, if any, natural enemies. If you lived in that ocean, and you were not a Liopleurodon, you were basically living in its shadow, of course. Once humans start telling the story, things get dramatic fast. One striking TV shot of an oversized Liopleurodon lunging out of the water and grabbing a dinosaur was enough to lock the idea of a 20-plus meter super beast into millions of minds. Scaling that back to a more realistic size doesn't really make it less awe-inspiring. In some ways, a 7 to 10 meter predator, with a head the size of a person and a mouth full of self-replacing knives, is more terrifying because you know it actually existed. You don't have to stretch the numbers, you just have to imagine treading water, feeling something huge brush past your legs, and realizing that in this story, you are very much not at the top of the food chain. Part of what keeps Liopleurodon fascinating is how incomplete the fossil record still is. Most remains are frustratingly partial, a skull here, a jaw there, a scattering of vertebrae and ribs weathering out of cliffs or dug out of ancient seabeds. Each new discovery can tweak its estimated size, refine its timeline, or hint at behaviors we haven't thought of yet. There's enough evidence to be sure it was one of the dominant hunters of its age and still plenty of missing pieces to let your imagination swim in the gaps. Somewhere under farms, towns, and coastlines in Europe, more of its story is literally waiting underground. In the end, Liopleurodon's rule didn't last forever. Sea levels shifted, climates changed, continents moved, and new groups of marine reptiles and fish rose to take center stage. Long before the famous asteroid ended the age of most dinosaurs on land, Liopleurodon and its close relatives had already disappeared, replaced by other designs trying their luck at the same brutal game. That's the quiet message under all the toothy drama, no matter how perfectly a creature fits its world. The world itself does not stay still for anyone. Maybe that's why this ancient reptile still grabs our attention so easily. For a brief slice of deep time, it was almost certainly the scariest thing in its part of the ocean. The living answer to the question, what happens if I fall in here? For the shallow seas of Jurassic Europe, the top of the food chain wasn't a shark or a whale. It was a four-flippered reptile with a massive head, an arsenal of teeth, and a talent for turning everything around it into either a meal or a mistake. As long as we keep digging up its bones and arguing about the details, Liopleurodon's underwater reign is not completely over. It still rules, at least in our imagination.